Hello guys, it's Peter and Eddie from PS Sound. Eddie. And Eddie. And yeah, this month is gonna be a bit busier. We are going to try to share more videos with you guys because there are many projects we've had. We were too busy. We had summer holidays. I had a wedding in the family and all that madness. And many people know that Eddie has got a crazy system in his daily because we shared pictures of this build on, on Facebook and we have hundreds of pictures that you will see at the end of the video so you will see what went into this car but we wanted to show it to the YouTube community as well so people can see it those who are not in UK and who want to have a bit of inspiration and new ideas new ideas about some crazy stuff because this daily car is yeah, not having a simple daily system, that's for sure. We should probably mention that the purpose of this car, I mean, I purchased it specifically for that, for the sound system. Yeah, so this is a Citroën C4. Ooh, you will see there's some crazy stuff at the back. Uh, C4 Picasso, like a what MPV, MPV cate yeah. cat category here in family Europe. Car. Family car, exactly. has a lot of space. And... Eddie wanted a space where he could put speakers to the ideal locations where he wanted them to be. So maybe I go to the driver's side and you can come to the passenger side. We will come back to the boot as well and then we will explain what's happening there. But the front end is what was pretty crazy to do. So as you can see the dash is just super deep. I don't even think that there's a car with deeper dash than this. Is there yeah, any? Probably. I don't know. I can't think of any. No. But there are similar cars out there. Many similar cars, but yeah. yes, it's also about what you can do in the dash without making a full custom dash build or whether you can put a speaker to the place where you want it to be. And this car has had pretty nice space right at the front. And as you can see, we have speakers there. Do you, can you pop it up? There you go, and people can see what we are hiding there. Because obviously you can't keep that five inch Fostex speaker on display like that. It's a bit, no. it's a bit yes. shouty in the face. But we wanted to create a system where you have great distance to the sound stage. And yeah, that that is definitely special in your car. That's the first thing everybody notices when they sit in this car. Everything sounds just so wow. far away. Because yeah. not many people like to have a sound stage where the distance to the stage is close and, and the singer is like right here in your face. It's more believable yeah. this way. It, it sounds more like you are sitting at the middle of the road and like in a cinema or from the middle a bit further back, not like in the first rows. Yes, the stage width is probably a little bit narrower than you would have with um in not normal cars we can't say normal cars because in yours you have two a pillars <laughs> yeah. um, in other cars the a pillar would be here and then you would have mid-range tweeter or whatever here i even seen a car at the euro finals actually i have content of that and i haven't even shared it I'm, I'm rubbish but there's a citroen there where they built the whole area here they built it up and they have a wide band here the whole thing is covered although that, i don't think that yeah. here in uk that would pass mot i wouldn't um, try it like that because that window you really need that exactly maybe that's an order where the side window wasn't so big like in this one but in that car i'm 100 sure that that little side window is completely blocked yeah. in this one you can't do that maybe you could have something at the bottom and keeping the the rest above but Everything was just pretty obvious what we would do in this in this car. Mid would go on the dash and then tweeters on the A-pillars. So the pictures will tell the, the real deal what amount of work went into this car. Because um, like with any dash build, you cannot really tell how much work it's going to be until we you, you pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we once we allocated a Friday, Saturday or something like that with Eddie, Oh, we would jump on it and then see where we get. And then when we pulled the dash out, we realized that, shit, it's just... I was hoping <laughs> that I can pull the dash out and still drive the car without a dash till the dash is done. <laughs> yeah. But then we realized that, no, that's not the case. Well, yeah. 
this dash wasn't one of the simple ones this was rather the other side of of the scale where the whole steering wheel column had to be dropped uh, the bar. whole the crash bar came with it with the yeah. dash the whole loom section had to be taken off it uh, we we don't have pictures when i was holding the dash half tipped inside of the cabin and then i was underneath and then the yeah eddie was stuff. climbed underneath somehow while hoping that the crash bar is not gonna splash his brain out it was definitely quite something uh to take the dash out now we i think we have time lapse of it when we pulled it out it was only the last stage when we disconnected everything and, and we just lifted it out yes yeah by the way again as many times i will mention it we have a lot of content from this build on patreon because at the beginning we shared stuff of it um so people can see more behind the stuff what really happened building this but yeah the dash build wasn't a simple build um so when people hear this car obviously distance to the stage is very obvious but also how dynamic the mid-range is we don't have a small three inch mid-range in this and actually that driver was at his choice because yeah. this system was built uh to m5000 euro category in master class where all the equipment parts have to be within 5000 euros all the new prices so we really had to look at what we can put into it but still achieve what we want from a system a dynamic mid-range is definitely on the list and when eddie said that he wanted to try this driver because you you had these drivers you wanted it for a home project as well or something like that didn't yeah you? just uh, those drivers are usually used in uh, home speakers it's uh, a full range full range in uh, horn enclosures so i just want to try them and but then this project came along yeah when i got the speakers i was thinking maybe if i don't do those home speakers the, the cabinets they will end up in the citroen and that's it hopefully i'll have space to feed them and yeah we made it possible yeah in this car that five inch disappears yeah especially with the speaker cloth yeah. it's it's gone um so yeah they went in but we didn't count the hours if we had to do something like this in a car like this i would easily say minimum six days work minimum 50 hours minimum because we had to blend that in you will see from the pictures retrim the whole section and then actually at some point we will have to pull it out and retrim it again because we made a little bit of a mistake there is no mistake from our side as you can see on the side so initially i yeah. thought that we put this alcantara because mm. this is this was supposed to be real Al alcantara yeah and it that's faded what we purchased yeah and i thought we put it upside down and that's why it faded but then i put the sides in and the sides are faded as well yeah you know, just they after. went in later mm -hmm. and they start to blend to the same stage maybe it's a bit darker in the corner because the apron yeah. covers a bit exactly yeah. yeah that should be probably the real color yeah but yeah it was nice when it was first done yeah. and then now it's getting brown so probably we have to select a different material in the future yeah i'll go for the anthracite anthracite not the black color. yeah 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 so that mid-range went in it does a beautiful job it's super dynamic and it's even if it's an eight eight on driver oh, yes. in terms of dynamics it it yeah. destroys pretty much anything on, on on the market they are relatively cheap speakers especially when we tell people what we have and how much they cost they they don't really get it but we tell them that you know installation is is where the magic is and we could have a two three thousand pounds pair of mid-range yes potentially we could gain but the the return is so diminishing that you don't have to spend that crazy money on something great but the installation cannot be skipped yeah. so that's a cheap speaker but the installation is thousands in reality that's what people have to understand so having an expensive speaker with cheap poor installation is not going to be better at all then tweeter yes we had many options and we ended up with those mundorf amts because i had them on the shelf and uh, we wanted to try them somewhere and when we tried them with these mids uh, we, we just knew it yeah we stopped looking we stopped looking because those uh amt40s from mundorf sound beautiful i haven't heard a single person complaining about them mm -hmm. if anything just for the acoustical properties of the car and how the speakers work in the given locations from listening position 
we may end up testing one size larger in the future because we have we have space for them i don't know how we will fabricate the shape so we can also trim it that's a different story Separate, or we may but, yeah, we, we may do see. a different solution so we may try the 60s in the future but that is only because of competition reasons really um the way they blend together and they work together right now i don't think many people would ever really want to want to change anything but we may play around because that's just also part of our nature we want to see what works in a cabin what works in a car and how we can get even better results but those tweeters are beautifully detailed they're smooth that's what probably most people say always say they are so smooth yet detailed there's no harshness in them okay fair enough if it wasn't tuned properly yeah it could be harsh just like when i always say about focals people say focal tweeters are harsh and none of the cars i ever let roll out from us sounded harsh with focal tweeters so yeah what's happening up there on the dash is fantastic then the other main reason why you wanted to buy this car because you knew that you would be able to fit large mid-base drivers in the car in the kicks and uh, quite many people who sat in this car without any introduction what we had in it they didn't even notice that we had speakers in the kicks yeah. where's the mid-base is it in the door yeah. yeah people were touching and trying to feel if there's anything in the door because yeah it blends in when it's all dark in the car everything is black you don't even see it yes people will say oh you know you're gonna kick that well yes we if someone has a big foot they can reach it this is definitely tight but when you press the pedal you're pressing it down away from from the from the magnet so it's absolutely fine my shoe size is is a uk size eight i'm yes. only a five so it's fine for me <laughs> midget um okay yeah someone probably with a size 12 13 could have issues but then yeah just use the tip of your foot and then you're absolutely fine this is clearly a high compromise solution but if we compare that in terms of acoustics and sound quality then that's where we gain everything because you will see from the pictures at the end that yeah we went went to town going crazy um, we spent well that, that's when i was on holiday that's when i went to euros yeah, I had one week on my own. When Eddie got a week in the shop and then... <laughs> and that wasn't easy. <laughs> no. Especially in this one, because you had to go through layers. Layers and, and difficult access yeah. to to the the hole. What's the hole size now for these drivers? A good 5-inch-ish? Probably a bit more. Yeah. yeah. So we have plenty of surface area. We always say you need minimum 50% um, opening. These are true IB to the outside. You know what? I just pop out for a second. Then we might be able to see it from the outside. But we have the usual solution with the lure and protective layers. Uh, actually, we used a grill there. A grill. We had a six and a half inch speaker grill that's bonded to the wheel arch liner, isn't it? Yes. And then between you have isolation and the rain guard foam that we always use. And then that way. Now, even if you're looking from here, you can't even see the driver. You can only see the shiny magnet. So those are the hybrid audio L8 V2s. The cheap ones. The cheaper ones. And actually, I didn't even see it on their website anymore. I didn't see the specs at all. Not even for the L8. I see. Yeah. They do have them because I found the yeah. technical drawings for them and everything. And they made a really nice 3D printed plastic cover for the terminal as well. You can only see the cable coming out of the terminal, but the top has a plastic printed cap. Just a little touch. Yeah, those drivers work great. Yes, of course, people could say, why didn't we use the L8 V2, especially the dust cap version, which... We will, uh, we will show it in the demo video. We will play a few songs without the subs. Yeah, quite many people. Well, but at the beginning, when you didn't have sub in the car, yeah. quite a few people were looking for the subs. Yeah, it's you know these are large 18-inch drivers. Okay, maybe below 35, they are not producing that output level and they don't have that authority. But in most musical songs, you don't you don't even have much yeah. um, happening below 40. 
Oh, I don't want to sound like the kicker guy, the good old classic kicker guy, because, yeah, we love sub range below 40, especially below 20. <laughs> um, but quite many people would believe that we had a sub in the car, and, and yet, no, we did not. They certainly sound so clean, they kick, and they blend in. They, they truly disappear acoustically in the cabin, and you hear it from the top of the dash. Come on, director. <coughs> pom, pom. Pom, pom, pom. So that's that's the that's the time when we have to advertise Eddie's Patreon channel as well a little bit, because quite ah. <laughs> quite many people. We I will, I will drop the link to okay. to the description. Then you know people if people want to check you out, they can learn a little bit from you because Eddie shares technical stuff over there. Um, design design it. work. Well, yes, I do share that, but that's not the purpose of my channel. Yeah, and this this video is not about that. It's not about that, but still, you know what yeah. you created there and how you created it, it already helped someone. Yes, someone who is actually working in the industry, uh, yeah. who's a professional and used your technique for something different, and it worked beautifully. So, Eddie created that to fill that space up. That's all 3D printed. Um, once it was trimmed, it went straight in and you didn't have to use filler or anything did you No, it was just said drop in and that's yeah. it alcantara yeah this is this was the color of the alcantara on the dash that's how it was supposed to be yeah that's that's black it's yeah it, it looks classy up. it doesn't look purple brown whatever but now it does a bit yeah so yeah we have the director to control the system the freeway and the subs and then probably this is the stage when we go back and then we yes. show what we have. We we have a look at the Amprec from this side. And here we go. And then the guys can see what's happening here. Do you need like? No, we have great light actually. It can be seen. I just want to open the door, but we have a bike behind me. But that's okay. So this is a very simple layout, easy access. Ground and fuse holder right there as you can see two amplifiers. So at the top we have the Zapco 150.6 AP running the freeway front and then we have the ST which is at 1350. Yes. We have the 1350 monoblock. There you go. I should know it. I was part of yeah. I was part of this build but to be fair most of them look quite similar size until you go up to the 2000 ST2000 that's that's big. Um and then we have the Helix DSP.3S running the system. It's very simple. That simple. There's no magic here. All the cables are braided. Um, everything is terminated with ferrules. Secured cable tied. Nothing, nothing to, to make people go wow, wow. But it's tidy. It's clean. It meets the competition rules. Everything was mounted with threaded inserts and bolts. Stainless bolts. So... Just like that. And once the seats tip up, you can't see anything from that. And then that's the part when, yeah. That's the influence of the Honda. People want crazy low end. An extension. Effortless extension. Well, if you can fit them, why not? Well, well that's the other thing. That was another reason why you bought this car, because yes. you have all the space. Maybe we didn't make it the most practical, although you have space on the back seats. Exactly. Uh, you don't have a family yet, so... When, when you were on holiday, when you had the family, you didn't put anything here at the back, did you? No. You couldn't. Back seats. You can't. Yeah. yeah. If we have time and then we finalize it, because we don't really have side panels and trim panels to make it blend in perfectly, however, it already looks... Okay. Okay, ish. it looks yeah. finished-ish. We just didn't finish the design. Um, but yeah, if, if we create something where you could put a temporary trim panel on the top for a bit more practicality so you can put some suitcases up on the top or anything, yeah. then um, then you can get some space for sure. But you already had five people in this car with luggages, right? No. Four? Three people and one kid though. So and the luggages. And luggages, yeah. Yeah, you made it. You made it. So... Yeah, here at the back, people think it's a huge sealed box, and it's not. It is, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Almost sealed. 
yeah, we have the classic picture and I'm going to drop the picture in here, right, right in the middle of this video. So you don't have to wait till the end when you scroll through all the uh, pictures. So yeah, we have the classic picture when we cut the floor and then we, we, we have to show our face through the hole in the car. And yeah, it's different, difficult to see because of the reflections. We will have lights, we have LED lights inside of the box. Um, and then, whoa, there you go. If I put it against, then we Does can see. There you go, it helps a little bit. So we have a huge square-ish ish hole cut in the floor where we have the rain guard protecting um, all the crap to come in. And as you can see, now you've been driving this car for what, since we did this more than half a year? Oh, I have 10,000 miles at least since we've done this. Yeah, and there's no crap inside. Yeah. It's clean, subs are clean. Yeah, oh, come on, let's go down so people can see as usual. That's where we have the madness. Is it still clean there? Yeah, everything is clean. You, do, you don't even see any. Yeah, you drive two hours every day, and other than yeah. some parts showing age and a bit of frost, but you know, the build itself has nothing. Yeah. Not, no mud, no crap, nothing. It's absolutely yeah. clean. Okay, you know, it's a good 10 inches further up than the lowest part of the car as well. But that's how it is in all the cars. Uh, some, well, in my spare wheel in the Honda, that's almost down yeah, at the ground. Yeah. yeah, but you don't have a spare wheel as such. So, yeah, everything everything was protected, so it wouldn't corrode. We have stainless bolts, and then once we will have lights, then the subs will show a little bit. It will be easier to see what's what's inside. We will at some point we will have twin panels, LEDs around this. Because, yeah, this looks a bit... Industrial. Not, yeah, not the sound style. No, yeah. yeah. We were lucky with that panel because <laughs> uh, when we had limited time and we had to come up with something to get this car done and we had competition coming up as well and we wanted Eddie to compete, um, we didn't even want to have a plexi first. We just wanted to build a simple structure, make it work, and then we will figure out how we make it pretty later. Yeah. But then this panel was... Um, screwed up because when we had the Audi SQ7 project yes. that I've never shared on YouTube yet I have the content that will come at some point <laughs> um, our laser guy screwed it up and he cut the, the panel smaller so we just had it on the shelf resting and we didn't even know what to do with it and then when Eddie's project was coming then we thought okay actually we could use it but by then the enclosure was already built, so we cut it yeah. after. That was another <laughs> one of those uh, uh, planned well situations, because we thought initially that we will build this whole structure in mm. one day. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> it took, it took out, a bit longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It turned out to be like four days between us. So. Yeah, yeah it wasn't just like making a plate and mounting a sub on it like in, in my car. It's gonna be shared this week. It's definitely gonna be shared this week. So guys, you will see what the, the new the new crazy PS Sound project is about. Um, well, to be fair, this is a PS Sound project. I, I didn't put so many hours into it like Eddie did, but we can say that at the beginning of the year, all the free time went into this. Anywhere where we had a gap, when I was here or I wasn't here, Eddie was here. What we, what, what, what we, can't, what we cannot show is all the extra time that you put into isolating all the buzzing surfaces and, and crap oh, yes. because we can, show, we can show because um, they can be seen all around the, those edges you can see if they are isolated yeah there's a bit of surface is back carpet all over the place everywhere where the plastic would touch yeah. the car around well, those edges as well it definitely paid off but yeah a lot of it's a but, french car yeah so it 100 percent needs attention um, or like things like like this you had to put extra soft parts yeah. everywhere around the doors um, <laughs> then we discovered a few things about French manufacturing because yeah like this plastic is a trim this is not 
like solid steel like on other cars this is a trim over the steel and then that was buzzing as well so everything had to be taken off and that's the trim as well and that yeah on the, the outside metal. well we had a lot of nightmare with leakage as well in the car because that trim is clipped on with classic pins into holes so the chassis has holes on it of course then people are surprised why they have a puddle at the bottom of the car because it it flows in there goes down and ends up underneath the carpet and we had water in this one as well when eddie was pulling it out and was soundproofing the floor uh, because of the mid-base installation and uh yeah we had nightmare we went back a few times to figure out where you had leakage from because you had leakage from the front you had leakage from the back at, at some point it was just so annoying that yeah, yeah you were that almost one, giving that it up one looks good, but this one that was my first dodgy solution because i thought that's where the water is getting through and it wasn't in fact i yeah. have another set of holes under those this one is not even clipped in because i took the clip out and and you sealed some, it yeah put some uh, silicone there so yeah yeah there were, yeah because that that's a trim on the top as well and there are many holes mm -hmm. underneath that it's just crazy I, I can't even comment on that it's just a stupid design for sure i don't want to say you know what can you expect from french french manufacturing but yeah we definitely had a lot of those why moments <laughs> it could be worse you know at least in the past year i put twenty thousand miles on it and haven't had yeah, Problems. but you know, you don't drive it mad, you look after it, you service yeah. it. Um, That's true as well. Those things matter. You don't, yeah, this is a daily commuter and you enjoy the music in it. If anything, you definitely get the most out of it. Just like quite many, sure. yeah. quite many customers we have and then people are like, you know, how can you spend so much money on an audio system? But then those guys spend two, three hours in the car every day. They spend more time in the car relaxing than anywhere else. They go home, they can't relax. They don't have that opportunity anymore. How often do you listen to music at home? Never. No. I do have a sound system at home, but I never listen from that. These days I also struggle to listen to music at home. I only use it for movies and even those are one in a few months. Yeah. So, yeah, what well, we didn't mention that these are the same subs actually that we have in the Honda. The Acoustic Elegance IB18AU. These don't have the Apollo upgrade, um, but to be fair, it's not even needed. And we thought that with the Apollo upgrade, we would get more room for the coil, for uh, more headroom on the excursion limitation. I think there were a few guys, I don't remember in which video or Facebook post, they were explaining what the Apollo upgrade does. But yeah, initially we thought that they will give more excursion. I, I knew that the Apollo upgrade wouldn't make any difference in terms of sound, because that's needed for lowering the inductance for the upper mid-range when people use this in home audio application for mid-range duty as a mid-bass okay. but the only reason why I had the Apple upgrade on some of them because with the extra plate which is like half inch thick we thought that the bottom plate of the magnet would be lower down so it would give more room for the coil to move and less chance to bottom out because in IB, if you don't put a subsonic filter on the on the subs, and why would you? Because that's the whole point of true IB, that you have no limitation on the extension. It plays anything down to single digits. Um, we didn't want to have the chance to make them bottom out. I did that before, sometimes by mistake, but I learned it, how far you can push the subs. Having said that, when you get to that stage to bottom subs out, you are quite silly, because it's doing hair tricks. But of course, if you have the chance to add that extra cost with the Apollo upgrade, thinking that you would have that headroom, actually don't. I don't know, I never talked about this with John. Probably the coil length is longer in that case. No, now that I'm designing that speaker, I think the coil in relation to the magnet will always be in the same place. Yeah, it's lower down. Yeah. But then it has to be taller. To reach yeah. the yeah, to reach, to reach the spider. You have it underneath the dust cap, or yeah, probably a new coil. Yeah, yeah. But For the upload upgrade, probably the, the coil magnet. length is is longer, but the the winding and the bottom of the coil is at the same place down in the magnet. Yes. 
So now we cover this topic. Hopefully, people understand it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we're right. Because well, maybe John will be joining. Maybe things. maybe I will ask John to watch this part of the video and then clear it up in the comment section. Yeah. Um, but as I say, <clears throat> if people think that they need more excursion that what these are capable of doing yes they don't look like monster crazy like sundown type um, speakers or what stereo integrity makes with really large um, surround yes these don't have it but they have plenty of excursion they have that clean 18 mil both ways and when you can push the subs to those limits they definitely move plenty of air and most people don't even realize what we have in this car. I had a guy sitting in this one. You love the car here. I demoed it to someone. Uh, the guy who was here from India, actually. Okay. I remember. And he heard that he never really heard such a, a linear, nicely blending solution. And he had no idea what we had in the back. It's definitely precise and accurate. And he has great extension. And I asked him, you know, what do you think? What sub do we have at the back before showing it? And he said that he didn't want to really guess anything because he had moments in his life when he was surprised by crazy solutions. Like some people built a mad enclosure for like an 18-inch sub and it was playing so crazy low. That can be done. Yeah. Um, but how low a sub plays is just one part of, of the whole picture. How tonally it sounds and how it blends in, how controlled it is, how fast it is. Transient, that's a better word to use. Fast is not necessarily the right way to describe it. But um, he was definitely surprised because he thought we had some sort of 12 inch sub in a big box or something. And then when I showed this, he was just like, okay, all right, now I understand. But when people never heard IB, they never experienced IB, they, they don't know what to expect. When they hear it, they can tell it's different. Yeah. It's definitely different. So yeah, this is, this is where we are with this map project. So we just have to play with tweeters and we need trim panels. Pretty much. Pretty much, yes. Pretty much. Well, we also have to mention that we are running on factory battery. There's no second battery. We were, we were planning to put one in, but realistically... I don't think it's necessary. You don't need it. Because um, that's the thing, people... 90% of the time, I listen to, you know, 90 beat maximum. Yes. Yeah. For the front end and the sub doesn't draw much because it's high beat sensitive. If we clamped it, I've had plenty of um, clamped videos, we could do it once. It would be easy in yours because it's easy to get to the speaker cables and everything. We could put it through the even the SMD um, that we never use. It's on the shelf. And then we could see how many watts we are seeing running into the subs. People would be shocked. Yeah. Even at high listening levels, we would probably see like 10, 20 watts until you turn them up to create like hair trick moments. Yeah. And then, yeah, a couple of hundreds. And for that, you don't need big power supply, big battery, and any any of that. You have a, what, 70 amp hour AGM up front? I have no idea. Probably. No, it, I bought the car, I didn't change it. Yeah, it's whatever whatever, whatever battery the car yeah. came with. Yeah. It's not even a special audio battery. And you saw me at, the, um, yeah. at the... Yeah, the meetings. Yeah, the whenever meetings. you come to the meetings, I, you don't run the engine, no. and you can play for long. There's no problem starting the car. Well, so far, we haven't had issue. Winter may change the game because in winter batteries react differently. But yeah, this system is, is not a high consumption system. Even even the, the traffic I shared a video of the other day on YouTube, yes. I put the clamp on it, I walked to the front to show it to people and the highest we saw with some crazy electronic songs, it was like 21 amp. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it looks unrealistic, but as I always tell to people, music is dynamic. It's not like burping for SBL. Yes, okay, if we were playing crazy compressed um, rebase music, yes, we could see higher numbers, but with normal music, I don't think your car draws more than 20, 25. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? One day we may do it. So here we are with Eddie's crazy daily system. Many people have heard it the last half year. Some people heard it at the right time, some people didn't. We had occasions when we took the car to competition and because of what the competition was about and what we wanted to achieve to create the lowest floor noise. Not that this AP amp had um, high floor noise because it doesn't, but we have very sensitive speakers. We wanted to minimize any floor noise introduced to the system so the gains were all the way down. 
so those people who have these amplifiers, they know that they have nine volt inputs. To feed this amplifier with, with signal, uh, yeah. Some people use preamps, but for competition, there were times when we took this uh, setup with the lowest gain structure, when the floor noise is gone. Yeah. And then, of course, when people expect like earth shattering output, it's just not gonna happen. You can still send the system pretty loud, but we know what it's like when now, for example, our competition season ended, um, we turn the gains back to optimal level where we definitely get all the dynamic range out of the system. The system is a completely different type of animal. You have so much headroom now, so much dynamic range. In fact, I think I found the sweet spot because previously the gain structure was set in a way that I left more room for quiet songs. Yeah. I was going maximum minus 10 on the director. Now I can go to minus 2 mm. for yeah. normal music and I still have 2 dB for quieter music if I want. And the floor noise is inexistent. Yeah, usually when we play like Jim Keltner, Jim Keltner drum solo, yes. that's a quieter recording where you can turn it up or we have the Yuri trio band mm -hmm. where we have that um, jazz trio. Yeah. Uh, lower level recording where sometimes you want like an extra 6 dB on the system to yeah. really make it come alive and make your eyes clip that I always say blink, blink. But, um, <clears throat> yeah so now competition season ended uh, he did well he learned a lot especially like at the finals when he left his documentation at home <laughs> yeah. never leave it at home because with that he could have won it was tight, to be fair. The, the, the cars in your class were all great. Yeah, all, all the cars are. All season competitors. The, all the cars for the whole season, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. they were good. They were, you I know. I wasn't expecting. Stepping on each other's toes. Very, very tight. Um, and at the end, yeah. We had a crazy long trip up north where the finals were, were held. And um, the book was left at home. And with that, you lose so many points that you have no chance to do anything. Sadly, but what Next we time. what we wanted to achieve with the car, we've got that. Those people who have heard it, they can tell that it's doing something the other cars don't. It has the PS Sound Touch, and it can only move forward from this point on. Although, in the last few months, we haven't had much time to deal with this, but we will also have to put that into the schedule. I don't. I don't feel like I want to. You know. I know. The system is playing. It. It does everything you want it. Exactly. How often do I open the boot to look at the subs? Mm. That's for, yeah, show Cosmetics. competition. I always say yes. The priority is to make a car sound great. Yeah. Look. I would like to have it done. secondary. But knowing how much work has to go into it. Yeah, we would yeah. need a couple of days, maximum a week to make it yeah. show, show worthy, pretty lights and all the fancy things. Yeah. Although this, this boot is not going to have anything crazy crazy because it already has yeah. simple clean li line you know lines and simple layout Alcantara yeah I have a feeling yeah, that come up with something. it's not going to happen soon and I don't mind it yeah <clears throat> but he has pretty RCAs Ooh. yeah that was from your old build wasn't yes. it yeah Covers, 3D printed covers for the terminals. That's also needed for competition, but to be fair, it makes sense. You don't want to shorten anything. Everything was labeled, braided, usual things. All right, here we are. I think we, we walked around your car pretty well. If someone doesn't understand what's happening here, then I think they have to watch it again. So what speakers? What speakers well. do I have in this car? <laughs> Being sarcastic. We can test people if they listened. Well, to be fair, yes, people always ask, you know, why don't I have a listing description of the equipment? Yes. Or, sure. or when I have a video when I play music for inspiration, not, not for reference, but I play music, we should probably record a few songs and then also record it here. And um, yeah, we will make a list of what we have, but it's that simple. Well, you have three, four different brands of speakers in here one brand of amplifiers one one different brand of dsp and that's it it's that's it. 
Oh, your source. We didn't talk about your source. It's just my phone. Yeah. We'll we'll put at some point a wire yeah, well, something. I will have a set head unit. An head unit right in the middle because there's a conversion solution. But yeah, we have the HD Bluetooth module in the Helix and it works. People yeah. say Bluetooth is shit. Well, I'm happy to challenge them to listen to the car. And when they think we think about it, because it's data stream. If you stream lossless, yeah. nobody will tell if you have a wired head unit or anything like that. Yeah, my phone can do that, but I don't understand where they come from because a few years ago you couldn't get that no. lossless from, from a phone and the Bluetooth quality. You heard it. Yeah, it was, it was cars, just great. Oh, I know. All the head units, yeah. But those HD Bluetooth modules, they are they work. very nice. They work and they don't have lag because we didn't test it in yours with video, but I tested it since hmm. and there's no lag, so you can play videos without lip sync problems. Perfect. So here we are, guys. Um, you will see the pictures at the end, so get another cup of coffee for that, and then you can see all the pictures that went into this. It is gonna take time for me to get it. Holy shit, I don't know what I'm, I'm taking on <laughs> hundreds of pictures. Um, yeah, you can check the description, you can see link to Eddie's and to PS on Patreon as well, where we have a lot of content of this build as well. We haven't shared an RTA video of this, did we? No, we didn't. No, and it's not going to happen. And we won't, because it's a competition car, and we don't want to give everything away. How the system comes together. However, we have dozens of RTA evaluation videos, so people can kind of expect what what's happening in a car like this. When you have speakers in the right locations, in the kicks, mid bass is, is definitely the most difficult to get right in a car. Mid and tweets just relatively easy. And then the subs, of course, they they blend in beautifully. But those IB subs also require large, large form and mid bass up front. That's why we knew we needed eight up front. Six and a half wasn't an option, otherwise we would have needed a front sub, which is still on the cards just for daily fun, maybe one day. Yes. We don't have budget left in, for competition to put in an extra monoblock and, and front sub. I don't know where I'm at now. But there's a lot of space there. And then especially when uh, I open this, where some of these have a fridge or even this. It's cooled by the aircon, isn't it? This one is not, even though on the lid it says it is. It's another yes, there's a, thing. Yeah, but you know, once once this section is out, there's so much room in addition to yeah, you can build the center console with the sub <laughs> already available there, yeah. You can have you can even have a turbine sub in this car, located central. Crazy. I don't have a gear shift uh, in the middle, yeah, yeah. you don't. It's on the steering they they could have they could have fitted a middle seat in this to be fair, because in some of some cars this size they do. Hmm. I think it was it the Fiat Multipla. I think yeah. That's a beautiful car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. But another practical car. So here we are, guys. Hopefully you like this walk around, explain video, and it wasn't too boring. Two crazy audio files, car audio crazies, talking about that stuff. Speakers, speakers, speakers. Hopefully you will have a chance to listen to this car on on some of the meetings we have. Every two three months we try to make a, a friendly meeting sound quality meeting usually done in brighton in uk or whoever someone is happy to pull a meeting with ideal circumstances because we used to have many meetings in the middle of fields where you have no toilet no food no drink and in uk we are quite weather dependent so we found a good venue in brighton in the car park where at least we are under shelter and we have everything close by food and everything we need so watch out for that uh, if we have a meeting coming up then in the uh, latest videos I'm gonna mention it so people can get a heads up also you can follow our Facebook page uh, the links are in the description as well then over there on the Facebook page we have an event section and if you click on that then you can see the upcoming events even the past events um, you can read about the feedback from the events we already got quite a few at the end, the guys jumped in and they had feedback on the meeting. I have to share that as well. Yeah, this week I have to try to find time for that one too. 
then you can see what people thought about the cars we have over there and how they felt spending time a day with with us and with all the cars with other crazy and um, car audio enthusiasts but other than that this is where i'm going to leave it now so yeah feel free to share it guys because this is a crazy build many people can have inspiration from it and let us know what you think about it otherwise we will see you either, either at a meeting or in the next video take care